Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, you, as you can see behind me, I just bought a ton of supercharged awesomeness for only $500. We're gonna be going over why I bought this, what the game plan is for it, and how we're gonna build it, and then off-road it. And we're also gonna be talking about some boat updates and the goal for when that's gonna be finished, and jump a -con updates and when that thing has to be finished. We got a deadline for that so we can attend a race. Stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Keeps. Did you guys know that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. That's where Keeps comes in. Keeps has revolutionized the way that men are treated for hair loss. They make it easy and deliver your medication to your door every three months so you can say goodbye to those awkward doctor visits and the lines at the pharmacy. And you do not have to go broke to avoid going bald, because Keeps offers the generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. Like I said before, prevention is key, guys. So you wanna jump on it now if you're seeing hair loss and treatments can take up to four to six months before you start seeing results. So you wanna act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you will save. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash B is for build like it is right here on the screen or click the link at the top of the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash B is for build and you'll get 50% off of your first order. Thanks so much to Keeps for sponsoring this episode. Let's get down to it. All right guys, so I just bought this car. I just got it delivered here. I have not even looked through it, tried to start it, done anything. And I have some pretty lofty goals for this one. Uh, should we do the thing? We haven't done the thing in a long time. Let's do, let's do the thing. So as you can see, I think I got a pretty good deal for 500 bucks. This is the supercharged 2004 Mini Cooper. It's the Type S, and the S is for supercharger. The bumper is uh, held on by Hope, but it's staying on there pretty well. We've got a dent here, and then as we come around here, we've got a dent here, a dent here, and what I believed is some sort of a damage control arm, which we're gonna figure out in today's episode. I'll have to pull that wheel off and kind of see. I wanna see how the suspension is uh, done on this vehicle as well. So I'll go ahead and pull that wheel off eventually and, uh, and see what we can do. Coming back through here, she's pretty clean. Very clean, actually. I mean, it's actually technically very dirty, but the body the body's really clean. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing looking wrong with the back over through here. And yeah, looks like the rest of this is clean too. So we got a very, very clean exterior except for the hood. It's really an interesting thing. Well, and the bumpers like kind of, that'll buff out, right? Nope, that's not gonna buff out. So like other than the hood and the bumper, this thing's pretty cool. This, minis are very unique in the way that this, the hood holds the headlights. So that's, that's a pretty cool thing, very unique to mini. Let's, uh, let's jump inside and see what we can figure out about this thing. This car's actually really nice on the inside. It's got that blue on black on, on blue interior. I'm gonna say this car was probably owned by maybe a, definitely a female, judging by the amount of glitter we have down here on the ground, but it is a manual and the S type. So she was a sporty type of female who just wanted to hang out with her dogs. We all know the type. I found another, um, found, found another one. And I also found a piece of the front bumper and I think that goes on our, this is a fender light cover. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, hey, free iPod cable and iPod connector. That's nice. Leather bound mini handbook. It's really clean. For a dog owner too, there's not that much hair in here. There's a little bit, it's not that bad. I see a 20% off discount. What's this gonna be for? What the hell is that? Oh, garbage. What's that thing? I bet that's an amplifier for the awesome speakers. Hey, I found another one! Now, I'm not sure if this cup holder is aftermarket. It looks like it pretty, like, aggressively screws in here. But it does say, does say Mini on it. So, we got a Mini branded cup holder. This person was really into their energy drinks. There's a lot of straws, uh, wrappers around here. And, um, 
you know, straws are illegal where I'm from, so I don't know how she even figured that out, but uh, what's back here? I'm just looking for the drugs, really. Uh, as you can see by the shifter that this is a six speed manual car, which I'm stoked about. Minis are really unique. They have the steer or the spe <laughs> steering <laughs> speedometer is right here, a few gauges right here. And then the tachometer is right there, right in front of your steering wheel, which is pretty cool. So I looked everywhere for a trunk release and um, and there's a, there's a trunk button. It's like a rubber uh, push, you know, pressure sensor thing. Did that, can't open it, can't open it with the key. There's nowhere in the inside. So like the trunk is gonna remain a mystery. That's normally where all the drugs are. So I'm kind of sad, but I don't think this lady had any drugs to be quite frank. I think coffee was her drug. So what are you gonna do? Not as exciting as the last car we bought. That's for sure. If anybody wants to see the most drugs we've ever found in a vehicle, watch Chelsea's Jeep surprise build episode. Ah, now to pop the hood, I had to Google this one. The hood pop is on the, um, oh, it really doesn't look like it works. It's on the passenger side. Let's hope it's popped. Looks popped-ish. I don't know, with the bumper off, it's, yeah, ow. Okay, hey, hey. wow, that's really clean. That's really pretty, pretty darn clean. So I took a minute and looked around here. The only thing that I see that's, you know, a little weird is there's some ducting tape on some ducting, but that's where it pulls in the fresh air. I don't think it's metering the air from there because it's supercharged anyway, so uh, probably doesn't have a mass airflow sensor. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue. So we're good there. This is an intercooler that gets cooled by this uh, front scoop here, which is really cool. So the hood scoop goes straight into this, kind of like a Subaru, except it's in the front instead of in the back. And that's an engine, supercharged, 165 horsepower to the crank of pure rip and power. Now, these things will uh, get up and move though because they're only like 2,500 pounds. And after we do a little bit of weight reduction here and there, it's gonna be even faster. <laughs> so we bought this project car for the Gambler 500. Uh, Gambler 500 is presented by eBay Motors. My friends at eBay Motors, they wanted to go do the Gambler. And I was like, if you guys wanna do the Gambler, I will buy a car that we can all do the Gambler in and build something a little crazy. So we're gonna be bringing, Beast for Build is gonna be bringing two cars. This one for eBay Motors and then the Z4, the world's cheapest triple salvaged. I hate that car so much Z4 and we're gonna try and kill it for good. Oh, it probably, anyways, we're not sure if it'll even make it, but um, it does run now. I replaced one part, so it runs and we're gonna bring this in the Z4. We're not gonna do any crazy mods to the Z4 or anything, and we're gonna be doing their Hoopty Cross event, which is like an off-road autocross type of thing, and then the Gambler 500, which is a 500 mile um, drive around where you try and stay off-road as long as you can and hit 10 different checkpoints that total 500, uh, 500 miles total. So I just got this car delivered today because I wanna order a bunch of special parts for it and I wanna have a lot of fun on the Gambler, but I also wanted to talk to you guys uh, just about the Gambler. Um, I, I love doing it, it's a lot of fun. It's more fun with friends. So if there's any builders out there, Beast for Builders, it's in June. I'll put the link in the description if you guys wanna come do it. It's, this is not like a sponsored thing or anything, but it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to see you guys there and kind of with everything that's been going on the last few years or the last like 12 months, <laughs> 2020, uh, I'd love to see you guys. I'd love to be out and drive with you guys. Last time we found some Beast for Build um, viewers and we had just an absolutely a great time driving around in the desert with a bunch of people. So trying to get a bunch of people, trying to get a bunch of friends, a bunch of viewers, bunch of everybody to just come out, drive with us and have some fun in crap box $500 cars to see what you can do with $500. So the Gambler's about $500 cars, but oftentimes people put mods on their $500 cars. So this year that's the way we're gonna roll. Rather than having a total budget of $500, we bought the car for 500 and then we're throwing the budget out the window and we're gonna buy whatever we want to make it fun. So as far as making it fun goes, I'm not sure what we can pull off with this thing until I look at the suspension and also there's a wheel that's pointing the wrong way right over there. So let's go check that out and then that'll tell us a little bit more about the suspension. All right, so this car was crashed in a very unique way. We have damage like right here. Um, so it got hit on one side there and then coming around we have this buckled in because this got hit really hard and then when we come in here, the wheel clearly got hit and that bent our shock. So our shock is uh, doing a weird bendy thing, which is pushing it in this way. And then it's really hard to see. This is not that hard to see. The lower control arm has a large kink in it. 
So once we replace both of these things, we'll be back to straight. So this is a pretty traditional type of BMW suspension where you have a lower control arm that pivots there. And then you have your steering rack, which you know holds your angle. And then you have just a shock and the shock holds the up and down and the in and out. So like the camera adjustment as well as the other stuff is all just done on the shock. Just somewhat strange to me, but that's how they do it. I just realized we have not tried to turn it on yet to see if this car even starts. Uh, we pushed it off of the trailer because I was worried because we got one wheel that's like straight and one wheel that's crooked. I didn't, I didn't know if it would have problems with um, just with the, the rolling dynamics. I didn't want to hurt the transmission or anything like that. So anyways, we uh, will check that in a second. So what I was doing there is, uh, so diagnosing the, uh, the broken parts, I don't think that's going to be a big problem. They're very cheap on the used market, so pick those up. Most of the cost for those is just shipping, right? It's like a $25 part each one, and then like another $25 bucks in shipping, give or take. Honestly, I don't really know. But a lot of you guys ask me why I, where I buy my parts and stuff, so that would be like a thing I would buy used on eBay, is what I'm gonna, where I'm going to get those from like an auto wrecker, or I'll call up uh, Mullins Auto Parts, who is our sponsor on the JumpCon, and see if they have any parts laying around. And that's how we'll fix that. So now the other thing I was looking at is how the suspension is constructed to figure out what we can do for modification. So for a gambler car, the tradition is that we go all out, we take our $500 car, and we try and do whatever we can to make it be able to get over the off-road hurdles that we're gonna run into. Now, I've done the gambler a few times and I've learned that you can definitely do the gambler on just a stock car. One of the easiest ways to do the gambler and get a little bit more ride height out of your vehicle is you put a spacer on top of your spring, just leave the spring stock. You put a spacer in between the top of the strut tower. You know what I should show you, I'm a car channel, I could do this. Pop the hood! Oh, you don't believe me? Pop the hood! No, JC! No. Alrighty, this thing right here, this is called your strut tower. There's one on all four corners. It's where your struts go to. So, we call them shocks, the shock struts nearly the same thing. I call it a shock because it has a spring on it. I have no idea what it's really called. Anyways, um, this wants to bolt up in here. You build like a two inch spacer or a three inch spacer in between this point and here. Sometimes it's a machine shop job. Some people have enough stuff to do it at home. Um, and that will basically just push your suspension down two, two more inches and you'll get a good lift. And it's a really fun way to do things like the Gambler and you get a really cool looking car with a great lift. So that's option one. And we're actually gonna do option one. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. But then we're gonna go and crank it up a notch. Oscar's in here doing crazy boat stuff, which I'll show you guys in a second. So um, on our, off-road vehicle we have a remote reservoir locked off-road coil over suspension so this is a, a massive shock that then gets a, a, a spring put over it and you can get different spring rates this has 10 inches of travel on the shock itself and then depending where you put it that can translate into your wheel having much much more travel due to the length of the arms and, and uh, geometry, I think is what it's called. So there's a build that really inspired me to want to take a shock and spring setup, like a remote reservoir setup, long travel setup, and put it on a stock car. I'm gonna show you this on the screen right now. This is a Mishimoto sponsored Super Forester with full on crazy built out custom control arms and long travel suspension. It's kind of like the same thing we're doing with the Jumpicon, except I don't think it has an engine swap, but I'm, I'm not even sure, it might. It's a crazy build, it's really, really cool, and I'm sure it's tons of fun to drive. So what I've always been wondering is, can we take a car like that Mini right there, a nice lightweight chassis, and then do like something that's kind of in the middle. So the suspension is nice and and not too like reboundy, I guess it's hard to explain, but it's not gonna, I don't want it to drive over bumps like a stock Mini anymore. Um, I want it to drive like one of these things, which in theory should work. So the idea that I have basically is to build like kind of a, hopefully like a quick and easy uh, suspension replacement as far as the shock and spring goes for something like this to where we can go off jumps and it'll land smooth kind of like how my Raptor does because it has that reservoir shock um, and it'll handle bumps. Hope, I'm hoping better than like say my Raptor does. That's the goal and that's what BS for Build is all about is we like to try these crazy things and see if they're going to work out because then if we figure out how to do it we can replicate it and just make a bunch of really cool crazy builds. So it's like we're going to use top of the line suspension parts to do something silly to see if it's gonna work. So let me show you how we're gonna do it. So the game plan for the front is to cut that wheel arch out nice and wide and then have a hoop probably coming out like right about here. It's gonna head out, out away from the vehicle to hold the suspension. Same problem over here with the damage. So we're gonna cut nice and close to this, come all the way out and around. 
hoop right there, suspension's gonna go down. And the back, it gets a little bit more interesting because yes, we can cut out and we can cut wide, but you know, the hoop. So we're gonna build a hoop that's coming off of, there's a frame rail back here. Uh, I can't really show you, it's right there. There's a frame rail right there. We're gonna, we're gonna weld the hoop off of that frame rail. And then I think to make it nice and strong, on both sides, we need a bar that runs across. So as the wheel compresses and the spring, the shock compresses, um, that thing doesn't wanna bend inwards or outwards. So we're gonna punch a hole right through there, bar that goes through here onto the other side where it will be held up as well. So it could look a little something like this. Now these, these wheels and tires are a little too big. We just pulled them off the Corvette as an example. Uh, but so imagine this, this wheel and tire shrunk down a little bit. What we're gonna do uh, to get the wheel outboard because when you do this type of stuff and we need to have travel, we can't have the wheel hitting into the body or anything around here. So, well, what's left of the body that we don't cut off. So we're gonna go ahead and run a uh, negative offset wheel, which will be a wheel that kind of looks like this. So the face will be way on the inside. It'll have a lot of dish. And then we're gonna run a little bit of a wheel spacer. And then we're gonna run an off-road Nitto tire on it. Should be a great package. Yeah, a little bit smaller wheel and tire combo. I'm thinking about the size that Chelsea has on her Jeep. Should be just about perfect. So that's the game plan for this year. A little supercharged. Oh, we, let's try and start it. All right, let's see. Clutch in, neutral. Whoa, started right up. All right, check engine light went away. We have a brake light, but I have, there we go. Hood or trunk is open light on, and then the tire inflation light on, and then the seatbelt light on. So uh, I think we got airbags in this beast, and it idles really nicely. It sounds pretty great. Definitely it's a little high because it's a cold start. Never ran this thing before, but it sounds nice. Let's get outside and see how it sounds. Yeah, it sounds pretty great. That has a nice, nice idle and everything. It runs. I can't try and drive it because the wheels aren't pointing the right way, but sounds good. Oh, I saw another good sign. The sticker right here says that uh, it was supposed to be serviced on 421. It's 518 today, so not that far off from the service date. And the mileage, 146,000, and we're still at 141,000. So we're plenty of miles under the mileage date for the new oil. So that is solid. This thing has been serviced, taken care of. Let's see how she wraps. Nicely. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Oscar, what do you think about the new project? I'm liking it. Think we can do it in two days? We're gonna struggle. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a long two days. It'll be a long two days, yeah. But I think it'll be worth it to figure out if it works. Yeah, for sure. Nice. So I know a lot of you guys have been obviously watching the channel for a long time and the jump con has been taking a long time. You don't wanna see us throw anything in front of that uh, to get in the way of that, to, to, to risk it getting finished. I promise it's gonna be finished. So this is going to the gambler, so is the Jumpicon. We are going, we set a deadline to have that thing drivable and testable, and it might be our first test ever, but it will be done by June 25th. It's gonna be drivable and testable by June 25th. Let me show you the progress that we've been doing behind the scenes. We had to do a ton of work revolving around axles, axle measurements to get our axle shafts created. So those are, that's all shipped off. That is being, the axle shafts are being created. Once those are created, we can bolt everything together and we will have axles. We are also changing up the, the base setup a little bit. We're ordering new springs that so you can see we don't have springs on the suspension to get our overall ride height higher. Uh, so when I met in Vegas with Sam, the guy who engineered this, he said, yeah, first step is you want to get it. So when it sits that the control arms are flat, cause that's the way that the car was engineered. So we put that into, into mind and then we're gonna do some changes. We also figured out some changes that we wanna make so we can get um, all of the travel in the wheel. So that's what we've been working on behind the scenes. In our next episode, we have a lot of stuff from our homies at Mishimoto and we're gonna be doing the rear mount radiator and starting to actually get set up to test run on this engine. Our race engine is a little bit behind schedule because that's just the luck that we have with engines these days. Um, so we're gonna run on this Corvette, stock Corvette engine and we may be uh, going to the gambler on this and it'll create plenty of power to be able to do all of our testing so it won't really matter but I think our race engine will be here in time it's a little sneak peek of the shifter that we have it's freaking a piece of art and uh, we actually got cables measurements all done for that as well so it can manually shift our Graziano transmission and we will officially have the second manual Huracan in the world so that's the update on the jump con we got to do things like the clutch brake lines Get that cooling system in, then we're gonna run the ECU, get our fuel going, and we should be ready for our test fire up and our test runs and all that good stuff. So I think, I think we're gonna be able to do that. Now, the harder thing is at the same time, by July 4th, 
I'm trying to have the boat running and back in the water. So Oscar is 100% focused on boat stuff. He's currently doing a water test in one of our cooling parts right here, making sure it doesn't leak at all. Um, so there's a lot of custom fabrication going into our coolant system, which is right here on the front of the engine. Uh, transmission cooler, oil cooler behind it, engine cooler up top. We've got a lot of our hosing ran. Uh, we've got a lot of the hard stuff figured out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really coming together. So before too long, we'll be swapping this out with the race engine that's back there, or the Texas Speed engine. Throw all that in there, and then we'll get this thing in the boat. So the next episode you're gonna actually see is when we have an LS in the boat. So yeah, we got a lot on our plate, but we do love a deadline, and we work very well under deadlines. So I have all the confidence in the world that we'll be able to piece all this stuff together in time. We just gotta do a lot of work. So in the next episode, we'll be working on the Jumpicon, and I'll see you guys then. Peace!